Google has demonstrated remarkable progress in error-corrected quantum computing with its latest Twilio quantum processor, featuring 105 qubits. This work leverages the surface code, an efficient method for encoding logical qubits using a group of physical qubits to guard against errors. And this announcement has gone far and some news vendors mentioned that quantum computing, especially for uh, Wero chip, would work on parallel universes. And they have gone far and assumed that the most likely way to communicate with parallel universes will be within this newly developed well quantum processor. Oh yeah, how lovely it is. Also Google published that this quantum processor is very efficient and the calculations that will take from supercomputers about 10 septillion years for uh, to compute it would take five minutes only using well quantum processor and septillion is one with 24 zeros in this episode we are gonna answer and discuss questions what is a new well chip what is so significant about the new well chip what we can do with it would we be able to communicate with parallel universes with this new developed well chip and finally would well chip deliver the promise of quantum computing advantage. And we are going to answer this question in the context of the recent publication by Google AI quantum team. Also, if you like to know whether we can communicate with parallel universes using well chip or not, watch this episode till the end to see the answer. Performing quantum computations is a very challenging task. It requires perform physical operations on physical qubits within a given time. To use a quantum computer, we need to map our thinking and our computations or develop a quantum algorithm, which is a set of instructions composed of quantum gates that can operate on qubits. Qubits are the building blocks of quantum information. The quantum gates are one of the basic building blocks of quantum algorithms. Such gates could be used to manipulate the quantum states of the qubits. Current quantum computers, we have to distinguish between two types of qubits, physical qubits and the logical qubits. And applying gates is done on physical qubits. Some physical qubits are prone to errors. The errors can be due to the noise from the environment, the imperfections in the hardware, or the errors in the operations themselves. Hence, physical qubits cannot be our ideal logical qubits, and hence we need to correct the errors in the physical qubits and group them to make a new representation of what we call ideal logical qubit. Let's see how. So the errors can be corrected by using the error correction codes which require post-processing of the quantum computations. Quantum error corrections, they work by encoding or sharing quantum information among several entangled qubits to protect against the errors. Why entangled qubits? Obviously, entangled qubits are correlated and the errors in one qubit could be detected by the other qubits, plus the redundancy and the non-locality. For example, entanglement allows you to spread the information of a logical qubit across multiple physical qubits. This redundancy is crucial for quantum error correction. If one physical qubit suffers an error, the information isn't lost because there is always a way to retrieve this information from the coding that happens in the relations between the entangled qubits. Hence, the goal of quantum error correction is to realize high fidelity logical qubits. If the physical operations are below a critical noise threshold, the logical uh, error is suppressed exponentially as the number of physical qubits increases per logical qubit. And hence we come to the surface code as a promising candidate of error correction methods. What are surface codes? Surface codes are a class of quantum error correcting codes that encode a logical qubit into multiple physical qubits, arrange it in a 2D grid. Surface code is a topological code, which means that the qubits are arranged in a way where the code is robust against local errors. The surface code is a promising candidate towards fault-tolerant quantum computation. The logical error rate of logical qubits is correlated with physical error rate of physical qubits. What matter is the physical error must be smaller than the threshold error in order to obtain good error suppressions as the number of physical qubits increases per logical 
qubit. There is also another challenge. There is constraints on the post processing to perform the error correction. Hence, there are too many challenges to apply uh, surface uh, codes or error correction first keeping the physical error rate below a certain threshold error rate second classical post processing must be efficient and as fast as the quantum hardware works in, in a given time in other words this would mean that quantum information processing is done and the decoding of this information is done as fast as it is generated hence a fast real-time quantum error decoder is needed and this is done classically in that sense they can identify the errors in the measurements and perform the corrections or apply the corrections so what is the new about willow chip from a technical perspective google quantum ai team reported a surface code that operates below the threshold and two superconducting processors the first was 72 qubit processor the second is a new 105 qubit Velo processor on the 72 quantum processor they work it uh, with a distance 5 surface code while on the 105 qubit processor they work it with a distance of 7 surface uh, distance 7 surface code both processors showed error suppression larger than 2 and this is could identify a good error floor of 10 to power minus 10. The rest of the results in the paper is about testing the sensitivity of the surface code to the noise and the error suppression. When the code distance increases by 2, the logical error per cycle is reduced by a half and this is very important. Hence, we come to many too many challenges that are addressed by this new recent work in Google's AI publication and the new value chip. First, they have shown significant um, signature of exponential error suppression with code distance. And also, they showed the ability to perform real-time decoding with a modest reduction in accuracy to apply error correction. From a practical perspective, Velo leverages the new fabrication technologies and the new design of a chip. Good engineering was done to put all the goodies and all components together, such as single and two qubit gates, qubit reset, and read out. So that was a significant element to fabricate and produce the chip. And it also shows that in this phase, Google has a a good goal about uh, to focus on producing better quality quantum uh, processors and not only to scale them but to have better quality and this is just a good step towards the fault tolerant quantum computations well the system is composed of two chips chip one which performs the error correction and the chip two does the computations the error correction is done on the fly with modest performance. Google Quantum AI team did measure Wellos performance using random circuit sampling RCS and they show it in the following tables um, and their specs sheet of the processor. You will see it on the screen now. From a computational perspective, the new Velo chip provides significant computations as Google's team reports in their paper and the blog posts about the processor. Random circuit sampling is the classically hardest benchmark that could be done now on a quantum uh, computer uh, today according uh, to several groups and Google as well. Well, its performance indicates that the processor is capable of performing computations within five minutes that would take about 10 septillion years from a conventional supercomputer. And this number we typically don't see in our daily life. Performing computations on the fly also has its own disadvantage because it reduces the performance. However, you can make an or correct the error exactly in the same uh, real time. That seems to give acceptable results from Google's. So also, there are some challenges ahead reported in the paper, like for example, the scalability of the quantum processor. It's not about only having 105 qubits, but how to scale up the quantum processors and reach the fault tolerant quantum computations. Scaling up quantum computing chips is not something trivial or easy, it's very complicated. For example, the overhead of real time decoding will increase substantially with the increasing the number of physical qubits. Reducing the error rate would require to represent the logical qubits with more and more physical qubits. It comes a question, can they achieve the same performance with 1000 qubit processor? Interestingly, while Google announced this now like two weeks ago, China and a lot of research groups and facilities in China have announced and published in this 
almost a close time a preprint paper which is quite elaborative about their new 105 qubits uh, processor which is based on the superconducting technology they also have published their benchmarking results and the performance of their processor they have also used the same random circuit sampling to measure the performance of their processor that's quite interesting however Let's leave the discussion about this new processor for another video when we a lot of materials and we study more as these materials that will be published. Now, this episode will come and boils down to a few questions. What is so significant about the new Wallet chip? The answer in short, it is a remarkable achievement. Quantum computing hardware is, is still work in progress and not close to the ideal logical qubits. Even fault-tolerant quantum computations that could be helpful for practical quantum computations. The new Wallet chip is just a good step forward in the right directions. The second question, what we can do with it? And the answer is, well, chip is a good milestone in quantum computing hardware. However, it doesn't mean that we can do much uh, with it or some perform some practical quantum computations with it. It could be used for benchmark computations, proof of concept experiments, and the quantum error corrections, but not more. And we will see this in the answer of the following question. Would this deliver the promise of quantum computing? And the answer could be drawn from the fact that the number of logical qubits needed for any practical quantum computations is still far from the current state of the art of quantum technologies and the quantum hardware. For example, Shor's algorithm would require about a few thousands logical qubits, similarly to do some simulations for physics, chemistry, battery and material designs. That also would need to involve a lot uh, thousands of logical qubits. Hence, the new Velo chip is a good milestone, but it is not enough to do practical quantum computations. And now we come to the interesting question. Can we use Velo chip to communicate with parallel universes? And the answer is interesting. I, uh, I had a discussion with astronomers a few weeks ago and they, they were reading about this news and they were telling, oh yeah, how people assume that uh, parallel universes exist. We don't see them even at, at early ages. And the idea of parallel universes in quantum mechanics uh, came as a confusion or some kind of philosophical twist for the idea of superposition which existed in quantum mechanics for almost a century. Superposition means that if you have a state function of a quantum system, that quantum system can exist in multiple states or configurations at the same time. When we measure one configuration, one configuration only is selected or fixed and the other configurations are lost due to the interaction with matter. This idea is confusing with having multiverse or parallel universes. We are not living in different lives in the same time. Maybe in our thinking, we can imagine different scenarios or different possibilities based on the decisions that we are taking. But this does not reflect that we are living in or existing in multiverse or parallel universes. So the answer simply is no. That's, uh, yeah, that's false. Now we'll come into an interesting question from my perspective and the answer is from my own thinking. Could it be the problem about achieving computational advantage in quantum computing is an inherent problem in the way we are doing or perform quantum computations? We have not good small quantum uh, processors and that's a reality. However, the current algorithms we also use would require substantial number of logical qubits. If we can develop new algorithms that deliver practical value with a small number of qubits that could make or use the current state-of-the-art quantum computers itself. We don't need more. Then we can say that we are close to practical quantum computations. And unfortunately, it is not the case. And we have algorithms that require thousands of logical qubits to do something useful with them. We come to the end of the episode. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. If you have any idea or question, just drop it down in the questions below and we will discuss it in the next episodes. Until then, let's hope we can make something or use the current available quantum processors for proof of concepts, experiments and nice use cases. Wish you a great Christmas and holidays.